Hey guys, what's going on? Valk here, and today we're getting to the part two of the RTA Draft Guide, which will feature aggro. So, aggro is currently my main playstyle, and I would say it's the preferred playstyle of many high ranked streamers such as Elvmage, uh, Korean Jesus, KJ, Ether Bulge, AB, and uh, Rikazo, just to name a few, right? Um, so, what is aggro, right? And I would guess the biggest question that people usually ask about aggro is how is it a different style from Cleave? I would say the main difference here you want to look for, right, is that when Cleave plays, by the time all four units on a Cleave team has taken their turn, they want the game to be over, whether they win or lose. But for aggro, when all of your units have taken their turn, and they might not even necessarily take the first turn of the game, sometimes you let your opponent take the first turn, and as long as you're not getting comboed on, you're fine. And you're trying to set up so much value and trying to instantly nuke down two units, one to two units on the opponent's team. So by the time all of your units have taken, you know, all of their turns, right? You're looking to play like a 4v2 or maybe a 4v2.5 such that your opponent can't come back from the game. And that I would say that is a main difference. So part of aggro, instead of focusing on just having top speed and comboing all of your units, it focuses a lot on, you know, interpreting your opponent's speed, reading their natural speed, and then picking high value heroes, right? So imagine if you're playing at 200 speed, right? Um, if I play my unit at 300 speed, uh, yeah, sure, I'm 100 speed faster, right? But I'm also losing a lot of other stats that you're going to be able to have at 200 speed. Whereas for aggro, if you play a 200 speed unit, I'm going to try to read that. And if I draft a 210 speed unit, I'm going to be faster than you uh, pretty much 99 out of 100 games. And then... I'll still have enough relevant stats to be able to outvalue your 200 speed unit. So that's kind of the main philosophy of aggro. Um, as far as the pros and cons go, I would say number one, aggro doesn't require insane gear. It's just a lot of mid tier speed gear along with high gear score uh, damage gear. Um, aggro has a tool to handle all types of opponents. Even when you're being outsped, if you can identify a key pick and just kind of come back from letting your opponent take the first turn, this this is honestly something that happens quite often. And uh, also, aggro, I would say, have very flexible units. So you can always pivot in and out, right? As far as cons go for aggro, I would say it requires very deep knowledge of the game and the meta. So if your opponent picks something, you must know what they're banning, right? Uh, if you guess incorrectly, a lot of times an aggro comp kind of falls apart because aggro relies on heavy hard counters. Um, you have to be able to guess speed thresholds correctly. A lot of times, if you guess the speed wrong and uh, something that shouldn't be outspeeding outspeeds you, you probably lose. <laughs> Uh, the other thing is that it requires a very deep hero pool, whereas like uh, Cleave or Standard uses a lot of RGB units, Aggro probably uses the highest amount of ML5s in the game, so it's it's very expensive to play, which is why at the Aggro players are usually players who's been playing the game a long, long time. And um, I would say a third weakness of Aggro is that it's very vulnerable to hard crowd control. So if you're playing without like uh, a very well-built Mediator Kawarik, without playing like an Amelia, especially DN in this meta, um, it's very difficult to overcome things like uh, Angel of Light or a Solitaria, or you have to maybe play under Pay It's very, very, very tough. So as far as units go, uh, my personal preference for pre-bans is usually Bellion. Uh, what Bellion does is Bellion is really good at stopping aggression, especially AoE aggression. Having a Bellion pre-ban lets me play two things. It lets me play Spectre Tenebria because now my unit is really safe and they don't have a free AoE unit to attack me back. And on top of that, I get to play a lot of Taga Hell's Ancient Book units, which allows me to play um, very aggressive in the early game and it lets me make plays. My personal favorite to also pre-ban is Conqueror Lilius. I think a lot of players who are really good at the game love to first pick Conqueror Lilius when they have that first pick and then ban her when they don't have the first pick. I think against aggro, she's as strong as she's always been. So definitely a very scary unit. And these would be my two personal preferences for pre-bans. I think Angel of Light is another one of those units that's really annoying and sometimes a little too strong. So keeping her out of the game will usually um, just kind of help facilitate to make sure your units can do their jobs. Another unit to consider right now uh, is DN. I think DN is really, really good at stopping aggression. And on top of that, uh, she's kind of too fast and she enables too much value of her own. As far as my own units go, one of my first picks always involved a attack buffer or a unit that can kind of initiate the fight. 
Um, it's been Payra for me for a long time, but with a DJB buff, it's a little bit dangerous to draft her if you don't ban around or play around that DJB. Uh, outside of that, sometimes, depending on what I feel like or what my opponent has banned, I pick up the DN or I pick up the Amelia. And if it looks like my opponent's about to play a lot of crowd control or something very slow, Mediator Choleric works just fine, and it's usually one of these units. And in games where, due to circumstances, C. Lilius is in pre ban and I still have first pick, I would just pick up my C. Lilius. I think she's very hard to overcome when she's first pick without the appropriate um, countering units. Now, as far as my middle units, um, as stated previously, uh, my Spectre Tenebria is one of my favorite units in the game. I think especially with a Belly in pre ban she's as strong, if not stronger, than the likes of Hua Young and Apoc Ravi. Now, if you don't like to play Spectre Tenebria or play with a Belly in pre ban I think picking up an A Ravi or a Hua Young is just as viable. If the enemy has a lot of fast units, fast single target units, I think a Landy's just as viable. If the enemy starts to pick up a lot of barriers, a lot of times I look to pick up my Operator Secret. And if the enemy plays a lot of tanky units where they tank down, I think a Strays is really valuable to pick up as well. Rimuru, really strong. Um, very good at coming back versus like units that can counter attack with buffs on them. Uh, you're really good at killing things like Rem. Politus is also really good if your opponent has a lot of Soul Weavers, as well as other units that kind of use non-attacking skills. Kisei is another unit I recommend a lot, especially if you're playing into units like Hua Young, Apoc Ravi, and Little Queen Charlotte. Aria is a unit I definitely look at too. Less of a DPS and kind of more like a knight, if, a very aggressive knight if you think about it. Uh, she kind of walls off a lot of these single target bruisers that's very popular in the meta. And on top of that, she's really good at stripping buffs. And if your opponent ever ends up in a situation where they have too many honest bruisers that just kind of trade hit for hit, I think Spirit Eye Selene is always good. Now, once I've picked up two more DPS, I'm going to look to kind of close out the draft with one final counter DPS plus one final attack buffer. And they should somehow almost always synergize. Now, as the last counter DPS, if they don't have like uh, like a Violet or a Green Armin, I almost always look to pick up Ida on 5. Ida on 5 is just so hard to stop under the appropriate circumstances. And then you can kind of just cleave their entire team with this unit alone. Very, very powerful. If you're worried about your speed contester speed, uh, watch your Shuri. I think Green sits really strong as well, especially if you build very high damage mid speed. Um, just to kind of like nuke down a target, right? He could potentially kill up to two people and I would say he's really good at killing things that um, It's supposed to counter aggro like RB, right? If your opponent is also playing a very aggressive comp uh, You can also throw in a Rem or you know a Violet, right? Just to kind of play defense around them and as far as that last attack buffer goes uh, If my opponents play a little bit too slow, I throw in a closer Charles I think Closer Charles check in, uh, check a lot of slower drafts very, very well. Um, if the enemy has too many revives, uh, if you pick a Sinful Angelica on last, it's almost always a four span. Uh, definitely really good. And if any one of the earlier attack buffers that I mentioned is still left up, definitely still viable to pick. So let's take a look at the first draft we have for the day. This is, I would say, mainly what a Valk draft looks like. And, um, you know, if you guys were here for the last video, right, whereas something like Standard has a core of one DPS carry, a support, and a mitigator, Aggro runs what we call an, like, an engine instead, which is usually a combination of two attack buffers and CR pushers, plus one more CR pusher that can CR push the rest of the team. And I would say CR manipulation is one of, like, the most important way to play aggro outside of just knowing the opponent's speed very well. So in this game in particular, my engine is made up of Amelia, Charles, and Operator Sigrid. All three of those heroes, right? Especially if you consider Amelia, right? If, if they ban my Amelia, my Charles can push my Operator Sigrid, which can kind of just go sicko mode on a FCC team. If they ban my Charles, Amelia pushes Operator Sigrid, same thing happens. If they ban Operator or cigarette, Amelia can now just push something else. We nuke them down. Charles now gets activated, and suddenly we're playing a Charles draft. So that's kind of what the engine is for this type of draft. As long as you know, we're sure that the Solitaria isn't going to outspeed, right? We're looking at a pretty safe game, and no matter what we do, we're looking to pick off some free kills. Um, push back the enemy team and then create a consistent turn chain for my entire team. As far as sequencing is concerned, um, I like to start with one neutral support plus carry early. So in this particular game, Bellion is banned and all three of the current meta fast units are banned. 
so I'm perfectly okay just letting him have Hua Young pick up my own Amelia plus a Steny, right? So Amelia safe here because Hua Young does reduce damage to water units, and Steny can't get kicked, she has perma stealth. So we're good there. So after this, right, um, our opponent takes FCC plus Landy. Coming back to me, right, on pick three and four, now I have, I need to be able to do two things. I need to be able to answer the FCC, and I need to be able to answer the Landy. So since he has two barrier heroes, that gives me a very good outlet to pick Operator Cigarette. Um, now Operator Cigarette, no matter what, will be guaranteed value. And I need something with good AOE damage and uh, potentially can also CR push my team and, you know, knock Landy out of Guiding Light, help my team chain their turns together. And Closer Charles is perfect for that. So now that we have our engine, our opponent tries to race us with, you know, the speed units that are kind of left in the game, you know, Ace at Solitaria. So I'm not super confident in my speed, but I know my Charles is decently fast and my Amelia is decently fast. So I have my two openers in my engine, but I'm not confident. So we're going to close this draft out with a Watcher Shuri. Uh, when everything is said and done, he bans our Watcher Shuri and we ban the Acid. Thankfully, when the game plays out, my Amelia outspeeds uh, and we were able to just pull up the Operator Sigrid, you know, one tap the FCC, push back the entire team. Charles was already pushed. He presses S3, right? Pushes our Steny, and then we can just kind of pick off two of his units. Even if he has Huayan left or Landy left, not really too much these units can do on their own to stabilize the game. So from that point on, unless some like RNG disaster happens, we're so ahead. Uh, we're going to have a very, very safe um, out to the rest of the game. Uh, or another example of a very similar looking draft would be something like this. Notice like the last draft, right? That you'll see some very similar recurring heroes. Uh, for one, Spectre Tenebria is like a personal favorite of mine, so if you watch my content and you learn to play RTA from me, you're going to love this hero as much as I do. You'll notice, right, uh, even with a bunch of different heroes, we kind of have a similar game plan. Uh, Dien replaces Amelia, Charles is still there, Operator Cigarette, still lots of value, uh, but instead we have Ida instead of Watcher Shuri. So how our engine works now is um, between Dien, Charles, and Ida, that is our engine. If so, if they ban our Charles, um, our game plan is Dien S3, and then Ida gets pushed because of her S3 passive, and now we have attack of Ida. Uh, if they ban Dien, Charles can take the turn, press S3, Ida gets pushed anyway. And no matter what, we're going to be able to kill at least one unit on their team, potentially two, and we're left in a very favorable end game where um, even if he can kind of, you know, nuke one of our units with Huayang or Apoc, uh, we can still kind of out-tempo his team and just be able to kill him in general. You can just provide so much value with the units you have. And um, as I mentioned earlier, right, aggro doesn't necessarily have to mean you kind of just win the game really fast. Sometimes it takes a little bit more time, right? So in this particular draft, right, we first pick the Peyra. Our opponent answers with Angel of Light can crowd control anything and Mediator Coeric uh, can shake any debuffs. So they basically have like a stranglehold on all the control units in the game. So for me, I don't really care. I take Amelia, which I think is very good versus both of these units. And I take Spectre Tenebria, right? Spectre Tenebria is one of those units where um, even if I don't get any buffs, even if I'm crowd controlled by Angel of Light, I can soul burn out of the silence. I press S3, right? I don't even need to press any skills after that. And um, Spectre Tenebria is going to be able to get value every turn. That's why I like using her so much. So this is something you're going to see very commonly drafted by very defensive players. Our opponent's going to commit a mitigator on third pick. And if you just look at my team, right? If you look at the first three units, Peyra, Amelia, Steny are very hard to counter. So he has he's kind of forced to take a very safe unit on four in Apoc Ravi, which leaves me very easy, right? I pick up an LQC, which is just one of the most premium ways to kill an Apoc Ravi, since, especially since Hua Young is banned, right? And I just take a Destina. Basically, a Destina completely removes the Angel of Light's turn, right? For a unit that doesn't do any damage, um, to have her debuffs removed is so detrimental, right? And on top of that, Apoc Ravi is a low DPS carry. And no matter what he picks on five, and granted, SSB on five, pretty smart pick against me, doesn't matter, I ban last pick. And there's no way an Apoc Ravi is going to be able to put the hurt down on an LQC or even remotely reach a Spectre Tenebria. So all I need to do is set up one turn where my 
La uh, Little Queen Charlotte can just soul burn the S3 on the APOC Ravi, press the S1, right? The moment that APOC Ravi dies, my opponent has no shot to beat me. And, um, you know, sometimes you don't have to kill every unit on your opponent's team. You just have to kill the right unit, and, right? And uh, identifying that game plan is what makes aggro so freaking fun. No need to go turbo speed where, uh, you know, our units don't have as much stats. We can play just as slow. And uh, as long as we can recognize our win condition, right? We can just barely outspeed them and then we beat them with value. Someone asked me like, hey Valk, I don't like playing with all these, all of these speed units. Maybe I don't have the speed gear, right? But I still like to play very aggressive. So this is where I would say, I think people can benefit very much from learning Rikazo style. And the Rikazo is like a legend player and he has a very different approach to playing aggro. So instead of playing these fast units and then kind of shifting the pace of your team appropriately, what he does is he picks FCC first and then he picks Amelia, which is a very standard way to play the game, right? Um, FCC, Amelia, Steny is basically like a standard team. So the, and he does this to lull his opponents into a false sense of security. So when the opponent commits an equally standard and mid-range draft, uh, he, com he instantly commits all of his aggressive units. So in this particular draft, Spectre Tenebra can very safely deal with uh, Hua Young and Archdemon. Operator Sigra can potentially one-shot Hua Young and, you know, press S3 and bust out all of Arya's stealth and protect teammates. Lionheart Sermia can instantly activate off of these two counter units in Archdemon and Arya and present a major, major threat because a lot of these units rely on having pretty high defense. And guess what? Lionheart Sermia penetrates defense. So you kind of pinch your opponent in this way where you're just incredibly offensive. And you know, as usual, right, banning the last pick gives us a very safe out to play our main game plan.